Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. I'd like to welcome to the show a candidate for Kansas' House District 47 Democrat, George Hanna. Welcome to the show, George. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, especially in this run-up to election. I know you've got a lot of campaigning to do, uh, but we wanted to talk about your candidacy and also about some of the, the problems that have cropped up in it um, with uh, Chris Kobach, the Secretary of State for Kansas. Before we get to that, though, uh, I, I'm very interested in, in this wave to, to learn more about what is leading to people running for office. So if you could give us a, a little bit about your background leading up to uh, this run. Well, uh, I don't know if you remember me, but you actually interviewed me in Philadelphia as a Bernie delegate at the uh, Media Day walkout. Um, and you know, I, I came back from Philly instead of getting all upset and doing the dim exit. I f took it to heart. The only way we can fix this is to get involved and change it internally. So I immediately came home, found the hardest district I could, and decided to run. <laughs> well, I certainly like the boldness not only of the run, but also you know being willing to go for one of the difficult ones. And I certainly agree with your strategy. Like uh, I, I think that the exact sort of establishment Democrats that we were opposing back then uh, would love for candidates like you to say, you know what, I'm not even going to try to reform the party. And uh, around the country in these primaries, we've seen some amazing candidates winning, and, and they're likely to go on to actually help to reshape uh, the Democratic Party after these midterms. So thank you for being a part of that. Um, now, in terms of your actual race, uh, you've had some issues with uh, Chris Kobach. Uh, he's not a guy that is a fan of democracy. How is that influencing your race? Well, uh, our, our county clerk has sent out uh, some uh, conflicting directions on how to fill out the ballots, which is really kind of it's disheartening because on the ballot it's printed how to fill in the oval and let the machine run it through. And but yet the Secretary of State had uh, instructions that they included with the ballot that says an X or a check will work just fine. And of course, now we have no way of knowing which races were uh, seen by the machine when you run it through. Yeah. So I, I'm looking at a, uh, you know, a possible recount, hand count right out of the gate on the first day. So uh, I mean, is it your belief is that county clerk just didn't know, like he wasn't sure exactly what would, uh, what would qualify? Or do you think that this is you being targeted with this misinformation? Well, there's only two counties that, that this happened that I'm aware of right now, and they're both very, very are. Um, neither one of the incumbents were endorsed by the Republicans for common sense here in Kansas. Um, and they are very much uh, Kobach strongholds. So I suspect some shenanigans there. Um, I know the clerk uh, here in Jefferson County as a uh, as an ethical person, and I think she was just going off of uh, the directive from Secretary of State. Okay, and uh, one of the reasons, of course, that this uh, seems very significant is the indications are that your race is looking like it's likely to be pretty tight, correct? Yeah, actually, uh, if our polling margins stick the way they are, I'm actually up by 6% right now with all the advanced ballots that have come in, uh, or at least have been voted. Um, and this used to be a plus 26 R district. Wow. Uh, so it's it's a huge lift for the House race. But in a congressional race uh, or the uh, in the last governor's race, it actually will vote Democrat. So they just need the right candidate. And, you know, I'm a long haired, tattooed biker Democrat. So I'm like a uni <laughs> unicorn in Kansas. And uh, the boldness of my candidacy has resonated very well with the unaffiliated and the Republicans. Uh, I put a, a 12 foot billboard uh, on the driveway of my uh, opponent in April that's been there ever since it says vote for me. <laughs> wow, that is bold. Okay, so I wanna talk about your candidacy because uh, you are endorsed by our revolution. So talk to us about your platform. Um, and especially you mentioned there that these unaffiliated voters, maybe they, they haven't you know, had a Republican or a Democrat in recent elections that they've really felt has spoken to them. Um, what are the things about your platform that is, uh, that is resonating with them? Well, there's there's a lot of things, but it's uh, obviously the expansion of Medicare here in Kansas. We've got CanCare, which is a a, a broken privatized system that uh, you know it, right now it doesn't cover nearly 200,000 Kansas that are stuck in the gap between uh, what the CanCare covers and then what the ACA can pick up, uh, and that has resonated across the board because a lot of seniors are involved in that. Um, we've also got some uh, pretty hot topics here locally. Um, that local elected officials have been uh, very diligent in making sure that people are protected. 
So corporate interest came in, wrote a bill, and then just shoved it through the uh, Republican-controlled uh, government here in Kansas, both sides, including the governor. Um, and my opponent, of course, voted for that after telling a constituent that he wouldn't vote for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last but not least, my opponent is the only dissenting vote in all of Kansas government to vote against agricultural hemp, which uh, in a predominantly agricultural district uh, infuriated a lot of people. Yeah, it seems certainly seems out of step. Um, and I want to learn a little bit more about your opponent. So Ronald Ellis uh, is the incumbent. Um, who has he been as the incumbent? What 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 role has he served there? Well, that's just it. Nobody knows. Um, <laughs> and and going out and and door knocking thousands and thousands of doors, I have actually uh, made uh, personal contact with every single Democrat in the district, and I've gone through the unaffiliated and now into the Republicans. Most people have no idea who he actually is, which is ironic because he's a 37-year retired teacher. He mm -hmm. taught most of the people here, <laughs> uh, locally anyway, but as a legislator, nobody has ever heard from him. Yeah. Well, it certainly seems like, I mean, based on the belief, I don't want to encourage this necessarily, but people think that this election is going to be pretty bad for the Republicans. Being complacent in terms of your campaigning at this point seems like a pretty bad idea. Uh, as these polls have been showing that you're actually up, is there any indication that he is taking this threat more seriously? Oh no, he, he stepped right up to his game about three weeks ago. Okay. I've been involved <laughs> in this campaign since February of last year, or uh, about 2017, and nobody took me seriously, and and I used that to my advantage. I just stayed under the radar and and uh, ran a very efficient campaign, kept it very cordial, um, and uh, stuck to the uh, just to the voting record and to the facts, but. Uh, uh, and because of that, I think he uh, didn't think that uh, he could do anything and just sit back and ride the R into uh, a re-election. And uh, when it became apparent that wasn't going to happen, um, all of a sudden uh, there's this influx of money, there's an influx of signs, uh, and he's door knocking. But it's you know far too little too late. People already know who he is after yeah. me getting out for last year. Okay, well, we'll have to see if uh, one month of campaigning is enough to, to go up against your two years of effort. Um, and uh, good luck to you in your upcoming election. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. I'll be watching for you on election night. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.